Oh, oh, what is that? that um, if, Go ahead. if it gets approved, when when you might start it? Here's the owner. When are you planning to start? One month. One month. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all the questions. All those in favor? Oh, it's it's only for the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, there was a guy written oh, there. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, all those opposed? Well, um, everyone voted for it. So, um, non committee members? Uh, one, two. Uh, two in favor? All opposed? Are we allowed to vote? No, no. <laughs> we said non committee. I don't know what All those abstaining? Okay. Two, zero, one. Two. Oh, two, zero, uh, two, zero, two. So you guys don't need to go look at it physically? Oh, we have the representation of it right here. Okay. Great, so the resolution passes. Thank you so much for Thank moving you. our case as a first one. Thank you, I appreciate Thank you. it. What do I do next? Uh, Dota number one, I guess. Uh, so this, um, the plaque that we approved, I guess it was before the last Thanksgiving, um, for Macy's, um, where they will, where they kick off their Thanksgiving Day parade, has moved, and so um, here's a representation of what's on the sidewalk, what has moved. Um, Peter Wright of the 77th Street Block Association has written a letter of support, which we have here. Um, here's our previous resolution where we approved this um, this new plaque. This new sidewalk plaque is going to be less slippery. Um, they are they have changed the actual um, substance that, that makes up the plaque so that it will be when in bad weather you will not slip on it now. It was a little bit slippery, so that's a major improvement. <coughs> um, uh, Macy's um, a letter from 77 Street Block Association, so they're not here tonight. Here's the letter from Peter that's right that says we approve this. this is all well and good. So, um, is there any discussion of this new plaque? So, this is going to be around the corner? It's already there. It's there. It's the there. plaque is there. Yeah. The, they, they installed the plaque last um, year. Right before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Right. And um, because of whatever, it wasn't a. Um, Needed a temporary submission and that's an art object. And now it's being given a permit. But it's, it's not changing in 30. So we, we still need to do it. We yes. do. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll discuss that. Um, I voted against this in the last Because to me, this is a basically commercial speech. And the use of public space for commercial speech. So maybe, you know, I think they're celebrating the 90th year. Um, maybe if, for their 100th year, I might change my opinion, <laughs> but um, I'll wait 10 years and see if I'm sure it's worth the time. But anyway, this seems like advertising in public space. Maybe we do. I'm going to take part down. Okay. Yeah. Um. It's dedicated, blah, blah, to the thousands of Macy's volunteers who have made the magic possible. You know, so the, the fact that it's mostly about the break doesn't manage to put their name on it twice. Blah, blah. Blah, blah. Yeah. November, um, the, uh, November. Okay. Then we November, uh, on November 2016, just give a date, just on, just in November. Oh. We did have representatives when this first came to us from the Block Association. They, they actually had no problem with it. Um, the Historical Society in front of whose premises it was had no problem with it. I'll actually make a slightly more serious comment. Sure. Um, I would rather see sidewalk art in, in the notification area uh, there than on the side. That signs. I mean, I should. I think we should talk about, to people about putting, um, you know, instead of naming a street, in the street corner and put it in the sidewalk. 
Three thoughts to Sue. Um, I, I what's that? Well, so I agree that um, I'd rather see uh, notifications on the sidewalk than on the street signs, but I agree with Andrew that's a totally separate issue. Um, I agree with Ken that this is commercial speech. I think the question is, this is the extreme of acceptable for commercial speech. I can't imagine any commercial speech that would be more acceptable than this because it is a, a neighborhood institution. It's something we'd want to commemorate. But it is a company. So I think it's a question of where we draw the line. I, I think I side with Ken that we need to have that line, and I'd probably vote against because of that. But that line I, be in the sidewalk? No, the line between what commercial speech we allow in the sidewalk, and, and also whether we expect something in return for it. And I think that we're giving a free ad to Macy's, and I'd like to see them give something back to the community in exchange for it. They're not providing the parade. They're sponsoring and getting sponsor huge value from their sponsorship. And, they and they're paying a lot of, well, they're also, Macy's is paying a lot of money to be the sponsor of the parade. Mm -hmm. uh, and in exchange, they're getting a certain number of sponsorship benefits. This is not one of them. And so if they're paying for the sponsorship of the parade, there's no reason that they shouldn't pay for free advertising. You know, if it wasn't or otherwise. celebrated. Um, yeah, no, and again, I say that this I, is the I extreme would, of something I, that I is acceptable. Everybody. And, and the third had no problem. Landmark had no problem, and they made yeah. it slip resistant. So right, and it it's a yeah, using that analogy, it's a slippery slope of what commercial speech <laughs> we allow. Um, and I think it's something we should be cognizant of. This is again the, the least objectionable I can think of. And on the last point um, on slipperiness, I support making it slip resistant. Any other comments, questions? Okay, well, we'll vote. All those in favor of the Macy's plaque, um, raise your hands. One, two, three, four, um, five. Five in favor. All those opposed? Two. Um, non committee members, all in favor? One, two. All opposed? All abstaining? Two. Two, zero, two. Okay. Ooh, No, that's not, not a tie, a it's a It was 5-2. It's a tie of the year. Oh, I think it's a 2-0-2. Oh, two. Or not, not committee members. It's 5 oh, all five in favor. Because the committee members are all right. It's all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I believe number three is removed. Am I right? Yes. So I thought Kenny said she took it off, but OK. That's DOT is, you know, T is for information. Yes. Um, is anybody here from Lighthouse Hill? Yes, sir. Please. Uh, number two? Um, this is number four. Okay. What happened to number two? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I'm missing number two. I have a motion that requests that we do things in order. <laughs> no, this is not necessary, Rich. Um, <laughs> number two, uh, the West 104th Street um, application for a play street. Okay, my name is, oh, I'm sorry, may I speak? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Love. I am a PS145 school staff member. I'm here with my colleague, Alana Bibacol, PS145 special education coordinator. A player is needed to do to the, rent the $6 million renovation of the Bloomingdale Park. Uh, the area requested is on the 104th Street side between Columbus and Amsterdam. This is adjacent to our current playground and would ensure our student safety during recess. 104th Street opens up to our creek playground flood methods, which lead to into the children's recess time. We are asking the streets to be closed off only during the recess time. PS 145 is a community elementary school that has over 400 students. Their, uh, their ages are from 4 to 10. We also share with West Prep Academy Middle School. They have 200 students. Their ages are from 11 to 13. Of course, the benefits of being active for young children help promote healthy growth and development. Being active this is important to our bodies as it's, as it's food. We teach healthy habits early. We set the foundation for a life of health. The recommended time for recommended time almost done. Back. The recommended time for children physical activity 60 minutes. 
without this play area, the 600 plus students of PS145 and West Prep area would not get the daily physical activity and the healthy lifestyle they need. And do we have a proposed amount of time that the place, that the park will be under renovation? I believe, you know, it's tentative, but I believe it's November to March. Yeah. They could work you, just in the winter on that? Really? That that blew my mind. Yeah. Okay. But you who knows? Great. Um, um, so I just have a question. Can you state your um, name, please? My name is Mia Samring. I'm a parent. Um, at PS145, and I'm so excited and grateful for this renovation project. Um, I'm really excited to hear that it's just going to be for one school year. Um, but I just have a question about the lack of a climbing structure during that time, since the kindergarten through second grade, I think, really makes a lot of use of that. And, and are they going to actually get the same kind of physical activity without the creative aspect of virtual space? Well, I or is there just no building? <laughs> We're asking for the streets. I don't know if we can physically build something in this manual. I think it's out of scope for us. Oh, sorry. Yeah. As okay. transportation committee. I think we're, it's we're something we'd support, but it, we don't have any jurisdiction over that. Is there anyone here, anyone else who wants to speak on that issue? Yep. Yes, my name is Michael Riley. I'm a resident of 104th Street. I'm also a landlord on 104th. Um, historically, everybody likes 104th Street because it's a nice big white street and they apply for permits to do anything and everything on that street historically for many years. The problem is when they close the street and I call the permit office or the community board seven, city office or the police, nobody ever admits to having given a permit for anything, nor do they ever know why it was closed. Nobody, and this is for 35 years, <clears throat> I've gone through this. So if somebody's gonna close a street, they should have a reason for it. They should make it known to the community because this usurps the rights of everybody who lives on that block. And that's a very active block. And we're going through a similar situation on 107th Street now. Where we actually have meetings okay. scheduled. I'm talking about, about 104 Street. I understand. Okay. But but let me the tell playground, you. The playground, the school has a playground. The school has always had a playground, a quite large playground. And last spring, they closed the street for a health fair. But I called the school to ask what was going on. Nobody there had any knowledge of it. The principal refused to talk to me. The community board refused to talk to me. Nobody admitted having given a permit for anything. So it just happened again. Grace Church applies for permits all the time. They have evangelical rallies of 15 members in the middle of the street for a half an hour where they dance and sing and shout, and it closes the whole street for all of the residents all year round. What does closing the street mean to the people who live there? Number one, there's no traffic. We have two parking lots on that street. We have a private parking lot for Douglas Housing, which is not very active. It's right behind the youth hostel. There's not very much traffic in and out. We have a staff parking lot for Douglas Housing in the middle of the block. We have a garbage dump, a huge garbage dump in the middle of the block. So what happens when people, when the block is closed, people come in from Columbus Avenue. They back in, they back all the way at high speed down the block to the private parking lot or the staff parking lot or the trash dump. And that includes the big trucks that haul the containers. Have you ever reported that to the 24th? Many times, many times. And to Douglas Housing. And sometimes they reprimand their people, sometimes they don't. Some of this is Douglas Housing vehicles, which usually drive on the sidewalk and destroy the trees. But when they don't feel like doing that, they drive the wrong way on 104th Street from Manhattan Avenue to their sanitation dump almost every day of the week. And this happens, as I say, frequently. The other problem is with that, with closing that block, is if you're in a vehicle on the corner of 104th and Columbus, and you want to go around the block, it's a corridor that I call the big block because you have to go all the way to 96th or 97th Street 
to take the right turn and go around the block. And that's why nobody bothers to do that. Certainly nobody goes on 100th Street, which is nothing but a giant parking lot for police and fire vehicles. So this moves the corridor for that traffic pattern up to 106th Street and doesn't solve the problem. It makes the corridor even larger. It doesn't solve the problem of people needing access to those two parking lots. You, you just I'm confused because 104th goes eastbound and 97th goes westbound. Pardon? You're saying that people, if they can't get on 104th, go on 97th, but they go you in go different right directions. You go right on Columbus Avenue down to 97th. You take a right on 97th. You can go, quote, around the block. It's but it's a block. very big block. It's but how does closing 104th cause people to go to 97th? It enlarges the corridor where there's a bad traffic pattern. But they go in opposite directions, so it's not... If you're going if you're, around the block to regain access to the other end of 104th Street, you have to make uh, a trip around seven blocks. Yeah. Four seven blocks. blocks. Um, yeah. You've raised a few issues. I'd like to get to them one at a time. Um, Jeffrey? Yes. Mr. Lung? Whatever. Yeah. Um, gentleman raised the issue of, of TS-145 having a playground. And is that not, would that not work for this? It's not big enough? Or? The, the whole thing is that our playground is going to be renovated. So during the renovation process, none of the children can use it. So if they don't have a playground, they're going to have to sit in an auditorium for as long as that school renovation takes well, what, place. What's being renovated? I the whole playground, the they're park. putting the, the school in the playground and a school yard. Right. I'm going to put this that, on the screen. answers that, but let me ask you this. On the other play street in that neighborhood that we have, um, run by Ascension, the church has people on the block at all times. Um, they have both ends of the block uh, attended to. If if somebody with an accessor ride vehicle or something needs access to the block, they're on walkie-talkies and they they let them know and they let them in. Is PS one forty five? Are you talking about things that would accommodate the block as well? Of course. We, we, we spent that the, the, the housing here. Our community is there. The students from that community come to our area. We have, we're, it's going to be fully staffed. Our children are going to be here. Uh, they don't control the traffic. But they which, don't control which, the sanitation. Which, which talks to the fact that you need people at the yeah. ends of the block. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And they need to be in contact with, with people. At the school, at the school, so that you will. If They'll somebody calls the school and said, "I have an accessor ride or I have an emergency," sure. you've got to stay. All emergency vehicles, accessor rides, will we'll, we'll push everybody back. You plan to have a guard at both ends. Yeah, because our this is from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We also don't want our kids to run into the street. Forget right. about the cars. Like right. we're most concerned about our kids' safety. Yes. So yeah, we're gonna have it staffed. And as a landlord, I'm concerned about my contractors, my plumbers, my electricians. All those people who serve my building, uh -huh. and they serve all the other residents on the street, who pay a lot of taxes, mm -hmm. and, and they want services. Students, families, and Sir? the renovations for the betterment of the children in the community, and but it's not for the betterment of the residents who are who are whose rights are being usurped. So, um, where where are you in relation to the school, east or west of the school you're building? Um, east of the school. Which building? You're closing the whole block. I understand. I'm just, I'm just thinking if, if your contractors needed, you were west of the school, and they <clears> came in from Amsterdam, that might not be a problem. But as it turns out, you're east of the school, so it is a problem. Well, the whole block is east of the school. Yeah, I understand. That. Which buildings are? One or one. And you would close the entire block. The whole block, block is and east of the school. Or just in front of the school. the turbines. As are the two parking lots, I as is the sanitation zone. You know it's only during the lunch time. And and so, so if it's only during the lunch time. If if this was four a, hours, four hours. When do you think service people work? Contractors, electricians, I would, plumbers. Personally, I would think they'd start before ten, but maybe I'm wrong. No. If if I may, if the if this was the block of uh, of uh, between Columbus and Amsterdam, the school kind of resides like from here from here to maybe half the block. This sec, we would only be from. This section here, we would not be approaching. You're not taking the whole block. Correct. Did, Did you, you say, say that there's, there's, there's some garage on the block? Yes. I, 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 parking lot. Parking lot. Yeah. 
Um, Colleen? Yes. If, they, if the school were to have, Colleen's our representative from the Department of Transportation, if we've, we've had this kind of discussion before. If the school were to have personnel at the Columbus end of the block, which is where most of the buildings yeah. are compared to the school, and there was an emergency, would they be allowed to wrong way down 104th Street to get into the block? No, so this is, this. With, when it comes to play streets, what happens is that um, the school is responsible for having responsible people man each corner. So if residents, or if this gentleman has work that needs to be done on the block, they have to let them go through to get that work to them that needs to get done on the block. Um, the school has to make provision where the street's clear so that um, if someone is living on the block and has to wants to drive on the block for far, they get access to the residence, yes, that has to be done. If there's emergency work that this gentleman building has that needs to get done, the school has to make provision to allow that. And from what I'm hearing, this play street is um, only temporarily until the um, the, the uh, renovation is fixed. Renovation yeah. is completed. Yeah. Rich? Yeah, a question for you. If your building is one on one, that looks like it's on the corner of Columbus. So, what's the issue? It, don't you have full access from Columbus to your building? I understand there's an issue with the other buildings, but if no, you're. The residential entrance is on 104th. Yeah, but if contractors and anyone else needs to get to the building, needs to drive up to the building, they have full access at Columbus. Uh, Michelle? There, well, if you can dodge the, back, the bike lanes and the double park service vehicles that are already there because you usurp the, the bike lane, the extra traffic lanes on Columbus Avenue for bicycles. So we have a real problem. Bike lanes on the, on the east side, side, side of Columbus. Pardon? The west bike lanes on the other yeah, side of Columbus. Yes, it was not the same number of traffic. Yes, and it's the whole the Columbus number. Avenue, there's traffic backed up from 86th Street to 110th Street all morning, every morning, every day of the year. Thank you to your bike lanes. That's oh, that didn't actually take away a lane. Well, Michelle, Michelle, it's true. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how many it's days true. we're talking about. It is. Three weeks. Side, side conversation. Thank you. We're talking five months. Five days a week. Maybe. On, on sunny days, kids don't go out in the snow in the rain. But what about the rain? They'll go out in the rain. No, the rain they won't go. They won't go. They won't go. Rain. Snowing. Up to like uh, 30, in the winter, 35 degrees, and I'll go out Which also shows how important it is for kids to get outside. Sure. Right. So, so, realistically, we're talking about how many days yeah. we all work it? Five times. Oh, I'm sorry, Michelle's still coming. Five five I would need a DOE calendar for <laughs> There's also the holidays, yeah, like Christmas break, we want to use February break. Chinese New Year. Chinese New Year. Thanksgiving. Christmas. 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 So, um, <laughs> I am absolutely in favor of, I would encourage my colleagues to be in favor of Play Street. Um, to, it's absolutely necessary for children to get out and run around. So the only question is, is it better on 104th or on 105th? Um, I don't know whether there is a garage and all of those kinds of instructions on 105th. Um, it's also, it may be better for your purposes to have it on 105th because it's a narrower street and an easier place to contain in terms of your staff. One of the things that you, like my colleagues may want to know is that unlike the private schools that we've talked about around the table before, public schools have school aides whose staff or staff members charged with running recess and so they won't have the problem of what happens when the guy with the walkie talkie isn't around. The, uh, the school regulations won't let the staff, let the children out if they don't have the proper number of people supervising. So from that perspective, it is a much safer bet than anything we've seen before. Um, about, about 11 or 12 of our staff have walkie-talkies, and the security guards have walkie-talkies. Walkie well, I mean, you can stop at 11 or 12 of our staff, because that was the problem with Ascension, is that they were trying to rely on parents to provide this, which A, is a dicey proposition if the volunteer doesn't show up, and B, but they aren't always trained for what, what, what happens, whereas you have staff who go through training and are experienced in this kind of thing. So this is a safe bet in terms of all of that. It is an imposition on the on the neighborhood. It is probably three or four it's hours. Temporary. temporary. It, it's We're only three or four hours a day, and as, as a field, you can walk around the block. It is also, I, I wouldn't put my money on only five months, by the way. 
um, because this is a very massive renovation. This is the this is the end product of our board's task force that reinvented what a, what a safe playground is. And so I think it, it behooves us to approve the collateral expedience that goes with that which we advocated so hard for. We saw $4 million and got six. So on balance, I think that those are the reasons to support. Okay. Does anyone else on the committee have a question or on the board? Okay. You want to call the question? Yes. All those in favor, uh, raise your hand. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven. All those opposed. All those abstaining. Thanks for um, um, Could you pick up your trash, please? Committee members. All those in favor. One, two. All those. All those opposed. All those abstaining. Okay. I know. Two. Two. He just drops his trash and he walks in. I was, I was hoping he wouldn't walk out and we could address some of those with him, but he did. With him gone, I, I would like to further Mark's question about whether you considered 105th Street. I, I wanted to. Uh, 105th Street, as you can see, <laughs> Uh, so 105th Street well. is, is basically a narrow street where the, uh, 104th Street is wider, just so that I don't know if children can. It's probably two table lengths with size. Of, uh, it's yeah, so it's, it's not just good. Just it's not good. It also it's good. Good. Is okay. the cafeteria has stairs that lead outside, yeah, and the stairs wall. lead outside to the 104th right. Street. Right. So. They'd have to like go out the cafeteria up into the main hallway, down, and then out the main entrance. It would mm -hmm. be a much longer transition time, and the middle school's on the first floor of our building. Trying to make it so easier for them to get out. They'd have to go through all the elementary school kids would have to walk through the middle school floor to get to the main entrance, which is what lets out onto 104th Street. Actually, and there's another reason, actually, if I may. There's another reason why 104th does work better for you, which is that the issue that you guys had on 107th Street with residential neighbors working at home. In very close proximity to where the children are playing, and let's face it, they're going to be a uh, This is a wide open tower in the park architecture area, so it's, it's more spread out, so it would be farther away from those residential buildings. Well, not that's not on the deck. And they're also part of the way. Okay. The main focus of that is for emergency purposes for the fire trucks. Right. That's all the resolution passed. Right. Thank you. Good luck with your uh, Number four, um, the lighthouse skill. Um, yes, it will yes. be coming before the full board on Tuesday, October 3rd Next at 6.30, and it will be at Goddard Riverside, which is the 88th. So, so, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. The full so, board will be, will meet next Tuesday, October 3rd at Goddard Riverside, 88th and Columbus. So we talked about, talk about the lighthouse. The lighthouse. Now, talk about any resolutions we pass tonight go before the full board. Oh, you're still going to discuss it? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, so okay, you said by the way. No, no, we were telling the school. Mr. Davis, October, so, October, okay. October the 3rd. Our vote is non-binding. It's the full board that has the, the actual vote. But it's a recommendation to the full board, and we consider issues in more depth than at the full board. Um, so the lighthouse guild. How about number three? That one, he said no, that's that all. Oh, right. Okay. Yes, good your good name, evening. Please. My name is Lester Marks. I handle uh, government affairs for Lighthouse Guild. Um, so Lighthouse Guild is uh, located now at 250 West 64th Street. For those of you who don't know us, we serve people who are blind, visually impaired, and multiple, multiply disabled. Uh, we have an array of programs from a uh, primary care and medical clinic to an adult day healthcare program to a school for children who are 5 to 21, uh, a music school, the only one of its kind in the country serving people who are blind and visually impaired that serves over 100 uh, people who are blind and visually impaired each year. Um, we have a behavioral health unit um, on site. We have vision rehabilitation um, uh, office on site. All of these programs attract hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of of clients to our facility each week um, and their primary mode of transportation to the facility is Accessoride or some sort of uh, version of Accessoride that will drop them off from the facility. 
Um, since we moved there, we, we've noticed that there is uh, there are some issues with the parking directly in front of our facility. Uh, there's an accessorized uh, drop-off vehicle, uh, drop-off uh, zone next door to us. Um, and I have pictures that I can show uh, that illustrate this. Um, and what's happening is we are experiencing, you know, during the heavy drop-off times of accessoride in the morning, uh, midday, and then later in the day when some of the programs get dismissed, um, a backup. And what's happening is there are some pro, uh, the first few pictures show, this is uh, West 64th Street, uh, right on West End. So there are some pictures that just show the site clean, um, and it's, it's rare when there's not uh, a lot of traffic there, but these are the, the pictures here that show the current situation. And um, this is the accessory site next to our facility, the current accessory, where a lot of our vehicles will pull in um, and use that area to, to drop off. Um, and there's also a construction zone on the corner of West End where they're parking their bulldozer. Um, so what we're asking tonight is that there's two parking spots in, in front of our facility uh, that we would like to have um, uh, a, no, a no parking zone um, so that our accessory vehicles can park. The last few pictures are actually taken today. Uh, this is at 2, two o'clock, 2.30 in the afternoon. Yeah, those, and, and there's two or three of them, in, uh, different variations that show we have you know, a, a major backup at times um, that blocks. I was out there, and, and there was four or five accessory vehicles. There were drop-offs. There were pickups. There were cars pulling out of the parking spots, and, um, and it's 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 not a good situation for our clients. We're we're concerned that they're forced to walk through parked cars. You know, they're they're, they're forced to. Um, Know, be dropped off in, in <coughs> different locations because of the the the, uh, the backup there. So what we're asking is um, a minimal of two spots. We're not asking for you know a whole host of other changes. Really, just the two spots in front of our uh, facility, 250 West 64th Street, that would allow uh, you know greater egress um, to our site. So okay, great. Do you want to say something? Oh yes, sir. Okay. Okay. My name is uh, Pat Ryan's yeah. TA president of Amsterdam Edition. And we are here tonight with a concern about the um, lighthouse. We welcome it, but here goes the problem. Just like he said, it's the accessory, you can't get in, but it's the bicycles that need to be moved. Because right now, they already took four parking place away from us, okay, to put them bicycles there. Are we talking city bikes? Yeah, yeah talking city bikes. Okay. City bikes, because I know that they could be moved and put by LaGuardia and give up space for parking and also for the accessory. Now, I know one accessory come, they want two, three, four at a time. There's the cars, that, the cabs that come. Okay, so it's just a total mess out there. Okay, now those uh, bicycles who they just they just went, DLT just went and put them there. They didn't ask nobody nothing. They just put them there. So if those bikes can move, but the street is narrow, then we we can have parking place. They can have parking place, and everything will be fine. Where are now, your suggestions for the movement of the Okay, bike? now they could be on the side of LaGuardia because. On 65th, they have bikes lined up on Martin Luther King Walk outside, on the sidewalk. Okay, they have that. Or they can put them on 64th Street, right, on West End Avenue, down that way. Because there's a big old spot down that way. Isn't this out of the scope for this conversation? The no, no, this is... So the Guardi High School exit from the 65th Street side. Correct. So if the bike racks were on the 64th Street side, Correct. it wouldn't impact, it wouldn't impact, it wouldn't impact the egress of the kids. So it would be and good for the bus to go down 64th Street. No, no, and West End. I mean, we we can't there. talk about moving a city bike location without talking about where we're moving it to well, and without publicizing that we're talking about moving a city bike location. 
So we have a very narrow thing on our agenda, which is talking about two parking spaces in front of 250 West 64th. Totally, regardless of the merits of moving a city bike location, it's not something that's on the agenda, and we haven't notified anyone either on the on this block or on the blocks where we might move it to mm -hmm. about the conversation. So we're not having a public discussion about something we've publicized if we raise that right now. And it, what ends up happening is what happens around the corner from here on 88th Street is, you know, if we talk about moving it to one location, it gets moved without notifying people on that block, then we end up playing whack-a-mole. We're about to go down the same whack-a-mole path. So, yeah. Just raising an issue that we right. want to consider yeah. at our next meeting or at some future Sure. It, it, yeah, but so I think we, we shouldn't go down the rabbit hole of discussing the separate no issue no of the city discuss. bike location. No, no one's discussing. No, no, no. We're, we're, we're just saying yeah. that they're just they're, listening to this, to that this that person's if you concern. From the corner nearer to West End Avenue to the corner nearer to Amsterdam, which would be on the back of the uh, high school. No, I, I totally understand, but that's not the item that we're addressing right now. We have to hear our constituents, right? She's certainly entitled yeah. to express it. You've expressed to her why this can't be considered tonight because we haven't done community notice on it, but it's something that we should tell her we will consider. Sure. No, I am backing them up. Um, we can't do both things tonight, but we hear your concerns, and we certainly will look to, to, to investigate that issue. And if you give us your proposal for where that might be, yeah, if we do have it, so we should. I'd like to make note of that. Okay. We, oh, um, 64th Street and Western Avenue across, and no, um, you want to move it to close the answer. Close to Amsterdam? It's closer right now to Western Avenue. It's right. closer to Western Avenue. So but it's in the street. Well, how about like LaGuardia? They have beers on the sidewalk outside the school. Places with ultra wide sidewalks. Yeah, they do have And that's a huge sidewalk. And, and, and um, King is. Thank you, I'm Jen Sweet. Um, and part of this uh, community. Community. Um, we were. Um, told that we were getting 20 spaces of bike. I know bike smart, so happy to have. But um, 20 spaces, when that block was narrow, and you had like 12 buildings and people have their vehicles, so it was terribly park, parking for parking. So we were never notified of these 20 spaces of bikes. So now comes the lighthouse, which I don't know anything about, which I and all. Who would oppose the lighthouse? There's no way to oppose that. But right. we're just saying that can you compromise, right. maybe take a couple of those bike spaces, and not all. I'm not saying all because you I'm know, bike smart. That's what we are. So, but we do have some around the corner. That could have been more. No one, I, I'm telling you, it's just so jam packed. No one in our community can. The, the cars that used to park now have to go seven, eight blocks around for parking spaces. So, so, so we can pursue this. Can you please give me the we need the specific, the specific location you suggested? So that, that, okay, on on sixty fourth Street and um Amsterdam or sixty fifth. I could give you three places you could go look. Sixty fifth or Laguardia. By LaGuardia High School. Correct. That's plenty of wide space there. Or across the street on 64th Street and Western Avenue. Big space over there. On the west side of Western Avenue? Uh, on west the side. Side? Yes. Yes. West side. Yes. 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 And then everybody can be happy. The residents can be happy. You have our commitment that we will look okay. at all okay. those locations. Okay. And, and when would y'all get back in touch? Uh, next meeting. The next meeting. Okay. Who is posting for, for things like that? Oh, no. I, I just okay. wanted to say that there was a public process. It was, it was uh, over a couple of years for the sighting of these. Um, okay. And I, I'm pretty sure I, I have a colleague. Let me tell you, and, yes. Uh, Let me tell you what they said. The one on 64th Street. Okay. They were supposed to come out there and see Margarita, the TA president of Amsterdam. They were supposed to come out there to see Patricia Rice, who I am. They lied and said they saw me 
And I said, yes, they could put the bikes. I never saw them. When I went downstairs to look for them, I'm like, where? The next thing I know, bikes were them. Martin, uh, Frank, did you discuss this with Margarita? Of course. Great, and she, and, and, and it's fair to say that she, she disagreed for the bikes. Well, I mean, you're, the, the proposal you're bringing to us tonight, oh, yes. they're going to investigate. Yes, I most certainly because did. The, especially the LaGuardia location on 64th Street is right across the street from, technically from her office, right? No. Oh, she's across the street. Correct. But yeah. it's, it's right around the corner from where she is. So I want to make sure that we don't, in, in the world of black and that we're not... Um, no, she's on one side. If, this if, is, if, if, if Amsterdam houses and Amsterdam editions are together on this, that, that would be a great... Oh, yes, we are. Yeah, definitely. Okay. We are okay. together, yes. Okay. Thank yes. you. Thank you very much. Okay, and this is one more question. Sure. Uh, I did notify me. Uh, did you sign in by any chance? No, I didn't. This is a sign in sheet. If you could do sign that, okay. we will certainly notify you. Okay, and how are you? Huh? I know her. Well, no. Well, then let's get her contact. That's not working. I just found that. That's not working. Why don't we vote on this? We have something to look into next month, but we have tonight on the two parking spots for my half skill. Uh, just a technical question. If I have I have a visually impaired daughter who's received services in the past from Lighthouse, does that disqualify me? Do I need to abstain or does that? Uh, otherwise, my comment is the Lighthouse is extraordinary and we should do anything they ask. Well, the people they're, they're who are opposing it have already said they are extraordinary, so I guess that's the ultimate. I, I don't know that she was opposing this proposal. She had right. a different she proposal that was. Which is why I said it's a separate issue that should be dealt with separately. Okay, that's how you question. All yeah. those in favor Not in the of middle the of the discussion. You need to answer uh, Rich's question first. Do, do I need to recuse myself? I have a visually impaired daughter who's received services years ago from White House. No, no. Okay. You have no okay. relationship with them. You have no contract with them. No. no. All those in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the whole committee. Um, Non-committee board members, all those in favor? One, two. All those opposed? All those abstaining? Two, zero, two. Okay. So the resolution passes. Um, sir, let me ask you, when you were on, when the Lighthouse Guild was on 65th Street, yes. we, we arranged to have audible signals at the, at the corner yes. so that folks using the facility could be, could be aware that it, and make a safe crossing. Do you have audible facilities at your current corner? We don't. Um, and we have, so the City DOT has the process where you submit the, the locations, and I, I can share those locations that you submitted. Um, and, and I think they have to go through a ranking system based on, you know, most uh, standards. So I could submit those to Yeah, to I'd love to know so that we can follow up. Well, and DOT is here. Yes. And we're happy to provide whatever support we can for you. Uh, but when did you submit the location? Uh, we submitted them probably back in the spring. Okay. But we do have a long list. So we prioritize them so that uh, obviously, could could they be prioritized as much as possible? They are being prioritized. Great, thank you. It's, it's, it's interesting that, that well, that was just Great. as off topic as the bikes, but that didn't bother you. That wasn't a rabbit hole that could go a half hour of discussing moving a bike. It, it didn't go into rabbit hole. It's fine. Um, it could have. Yes, um, is the applicant for the new stand at the northwest thank corner? You. Oh, thank you, sir. 102nd and Broadway here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is the applicant here for the new stand? Is Simo Mashawari, are you here? I'm doing we yes, did number, we did number five. five, number five. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, we will wait um, until the end of the meeting on the uh, newsstand. Um, do new let's do new business. Um, there is an, an item about the double decker buses. Who is going to make that? Yes, ma'am. What's your name, please? My name is Leonel Kamenaka. I'm from the Coalition for INT uh, 1657. And basically, this is uh, 
a bill to amend the administrative law so that there is a consistent standard of safety on double decker buses, uh, requiring the owners to have a licensed person on the second level uh, because the driver has a blind spot and cannot see on the second level. When you, I'm sorry, yes? when you say license, what, what kind of license? A tour guide license. Those are the people who are under the auspices of the Consumer Affairs Department. And um, right now, only 50% of the double decker um, companies uh, or people have uh, people on the second level. So it's a dangerous situation. Uh, and um, if you're on top of a bus, you can see in front of the driver. You can see the street in front of the driver around. You can see all the passengers. There's like 90 people on board. Uh, Buses. And they've been around since 1896. And they're like, there's now different estimates of how many, 225, but 237 is 327. And they make thousands of trips each week around crowded areas, including the West Side. So to speak on this issue, to hear somebody here from our company, from, from our coalition, Mr. Halina. Can you give us the name of that coalition again, please? Coalition for INT 1657. Would it be worth reading the very short description of INT 1657 yes. so we know it? Yes. Uh, it's a law proposed by Donis Rodriguez, who's the chair of the Transportation Committee of City Council, Rafael Espanol, and Costa Constantines. Uh, sightseeing tour buses can be challenging to operate for drivers who are expected to simultaneously narrate tours and otherwise interact with, entertain, and attend to their passengers. <laughs> the distractions associated with these competing duties could lead to traffic violations, accidents, and even injuries for passengers, other vehicles, and pedestrians alike. Moreover, these distractions and safety concerns may be more pronounced for double-decker tour buses because they accommodate twice as many passengers on separate levels. This law would require double-decker sightseeing tour buses to have one owner representative on the upper deck of the bus, in addition to the driver at all times when passengers are present on the upper deck. This requirement could help alleviate distractions to drivers, thereby creating a safer environment on NYC streets. Okay, uh, let me ask you this. The inference is that the driver is also the person giving the tour on these buses? No. There's no second person? No, uh, there were two companies where uh, the drivers were doing, uh, some of the drivers were doing the tours. So that was really distracted yes. driving, obviously. obviously. So many is, that, but just, is that legal? Uh, well, Because you're, no, you're proposing but, to change a law, and I, I, I don't know what the current law says. Uh, the current law doesn't specify that all double-deckers have to have someone on the second level. Um, Do they, does it specify that they have to have a separately licensed tour guide in addition to the licensed driver? Right. Yeah, that, oh, it does. Yes. No, okay. it doesn't specify that there has to be that someone on sense. the second level. That's the level. one that makes yeah. sense. So the idea, I don't care if they're on the top, top or the bottom, but they right. shouldn't be the driver having to concentrate <laughs> on, on the tour. It right. should be concentrating or she on the road. Right. Two stages exactly. of two uh, floors especially tour. Especially with yeah. so many people and they're so powerful. Yes. Many it doesn't really matter how many people there are. If there's one person and the driver is narrating a tour, that seems to be a concern. So no, the driver shouldn't be the narrator of the tour. There should be one, at least one other person. If they want to put another one on the top level, that's great too. But I, when I've actually seen these things go by, I've seen the person like standing at the rear yeah. and, and right. his voice or her voice went to both levels. Yeah, well, they're, they're on the second level. If there is someone on the bus that decides the driver, the person is on the second level. And there's a sound system, so it's not to disturb the neighborhood where people are right. Yeah, there is, right. Well, what, what's the safety benefit of having a second person on the second um, level? Because the driver has blind spots on the second well, level. Well, are they going to shout down to the driver? No, they have a microphone, so they can communicate through microphone. And the driver has a speaker on your seat. For example, I'll give you two examples, okay? Uh, one was um, uh, a, a guy on top of the bus who wanted to throw his satchel over the side. And the, the tour guide said, no, you can't do that. So he couldn't do it. Then another time, uh, this kid got his, uh, his head stuck in the bars. There's two rails on the top. Uh, the child got it 
the head stuck in the bars. So the uh, person called down to the driver to invite the phone, stopped the bus, the driver came up and pulled up the railing so the kids were free. So it's so like that's having why a it helps. chaperone on the top. Yeah, because they're very uh, unpredictable situations. But so the kind of kind of is the can I ask something? Right. If, yeah. if you say that this second person would advise the driver of you know, road conditions that, or the blind spots that, that he or she has on the on the ground level or right. the bottom level, yeah. doesn't that sort of infer that the, that that person would always be at the window on the second level? Well, the driver's blind spots are at the front and the rear of the bus, and this is where we are we are looking. We're constantly interacting with passengers. Um, and as the tour progresses and looking around to see if everything is all right in the front and the back, and anything that happens with the uh, passengers yeah. you notice uh, because we're looking at them. We're not asleep uh, up there, just counting our cell phone messages, our email messages. So. Do you happen to know offhand, does your coalition know the number of tour operators that? that have this second person versus those that don't? Uh, well, there's one that has the second person, and there's one that has um, half of their bus, uh, of their, um, uh, half of their people, uh, half of their buses have people on the second level. Then there's this thing called the ride. I don't know if you've seen it. It's very big, sort of green or something. They have always have a step on to a guide. Uh, and um, then there's uh, smaller companies uh, that don't like uh, New York or something. Yes. Um, any other questions? He wanted to speak. Yeah. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Oh. Are you? Yeah. I'm a tour guide. And the main reason to have a licensed tour guide. I'm a little worried about this legislation because it's just licensed <coughs> person. That doesn't specify licensed tour guide. Not the best. Uh, I don't know. You, I've been doing this for 13 years. When you're up on top of that bus, you have people from all over the world. Usually within the course of a week, I see 70 different nationalities on the bus. Uh, the only ones who give me any trouble are the Americans, but that's <laughs> another story. And you really have to be on your toes up there because if anybody stands up in that bus when it's moving, we have Westinghouse air brakes. And they stop immediately when that driver stops on them. And that but you will go flying out of the bus because there's no requirement to wear seat belts. Uh, we have seat belts on our buses. I have and no, never seen anyone use them except once in seven years. Wait, sorry. When you say we'll go flying on the bus, we're talking about open air buses, right? Yes. Okay. They're not all, about, all tour buses are not that, are they? Uh, yes, they are. Everyone uh, in New York, most of the tour buses. Uh, yeah, we're not using those closed over the road coaches. Right. Those are step on yeah, yeah, yeah. All the tour companies in New York are using open double deck buses. Okay. We have a, some of ours have a uh, a thing in the front that say closed portion, uh, but that doesn't solve any problems. Mm -hmm. Anyway, because if you stand up in there, you'll still go flying. Uh, you've got to keep them not being unruly. It's very, very hard to do. And I've seen people up there that tried to cut corners in one of the other companies that I worked for, and they had non-licensed personnel up there trying to keep order. They couldn't keep order. You can't do it. You have to. You have to really know what you're doing as a tour guide to keep order on the bus. Uh, it's like a school bus in some in some respects, except the adults are worse. <laughs> I have never had trouble with a child on my bus, ever. So uh, what, what are your specific years. problems with the proposed legislation? Uh, the only thing I'm worried about with the proposed legislation is it doesn't specify licensed tour guide as opposed to licensed uh, person. It could be anybody with a driver's license or a dog license. It doesn't mean anything. So if the tour guide who's on the upper level is observing the conditions mm -hmm. and and giving leading the tour for the people on the upper level, I assume there's a separate person for the lower level? No. No, it's the same person. The same person. Okay. But the point is is that the driver, when he's down there, he can he can only see one or two trucks ahead 
in traffic. I can see three blocks ahead, four blocks ahead, and tell him on my microphone that there's an ambulance, there's a fire truck, there's this, there's an accident on Canal Street, don't turn, get into the other lane. And without that, uh, you know, it's, it's dangerous. It's very dangerous. So you support the legislation, oh, yeah. but, but you'd rather see a but I'd rather see a specified yeah. licensed sightseeing guide. I mean, this is a tough license. You don't just get it. Uh, uh, when you get it from the Department of Consumer Affairs, you've studied six months for it. You have to know the traffic rules. You have to know everything there is to know about the bus itself, the safety features of the bus. Uh, I was on a bus when the driver wasn't there, the two tour guides, and he started rolling on 7th Avenue, down into Times Square. And uh, the other uh, the other guy was even faster than I was, a young kid, he ran up and he shut that bus down. We so you have to know how to drive it even though you don't have a, a, a professional driver's license yeah. for a CDL, for a commercial driver's license. Are any of the bus companies, who who's on the coalition? Are any of the, the companies? I'm sorry? The guides, uh, uh, it's called GANEC, Guides Association of New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, and different people that think it's an important issue, plus TWU. Mm -hmm. And um, that's it so far. Okay. We're trying to get Safe Streets New York and uh, New York City, though. Um, well, I think to proceed, I, I personally know nothing about this subject. And I've heard your, your what you're saying seems usual to me. And I think, in my personal opinion, to act, I think we need more information. I'd, I'd like to get the sense of the committee. That's my my well, opinion. It was not the agenda. Yeah. I don't know whether let's, let's do this. But I think it would behoove us to possibly get to somebody face. from from uh, Council Member Rodriguez's right. office They're, to come here and speak to us about it. Right. Would you be amenable to? Of course. Right with me. Um, the. Uh, and maybe someone from the industry. He just changed his chief of uh, legislation. Russell Murphy was the person who did the legislation, and I don't really know who the replacement is. He just we know it, Donna. We can find out. Oh, yeah. oh okay. <laughs> is Russell gone from the office, or is he still? He's not in the office. Well, thank you for the information. It's again an issue I knew nothing about, so we're, we're gonna have to we will follow up. It. It sounds all right. So, do you want us to come back? You're going to call uh, you, Don. Yes, yeah, could, could you leave us your contact information? Sure, and then uh, we'll come back to the next transportation. We'll let you know when that person is coming, and then we'll, we'll be able to make a more intelligent decision. Oh, yes, yeah. thank you so much. Let's see. Uh, next, oh, don't look at the app. here. Wow. Uh, number of film locations in the could, neighborhood. Can I just make one point on this? I feel that this is an issue that's not overly relevant, and I feel I have enough information to support what they're proposing. Knowing that Rodriguez is behind it, I don't know that I care to spend time at a future meeting, and I'm happy to vote in favor of others. If I could speak, sorry, sorry. Of course you could. I'd like to be on the same side as you, but I'm, I'm not on this one. Um, there's a, there, are a couple, there are pieces of legislation that look really great on the surface, but if you have more background on it, you'll find perhaps that they're replacing legislation that already exists on the same topic and replacing it poorly. Or there's something yeah. else in there that we that we don't know. You know, as mm -hmm. I have almost never vote for something, I never I didn't hear anything from the other side on it. That's that's the problem. Yeah, I'm not sure what the other side could say. More info can never hurt. Yeah, is there another side? Well, it would add cost to our must be. But, but there is potential for So are we reaching out to to find the other side or just by publicizing that it's on the agenda? Uh, we're gonna but, we're gonna try to get a tour well tour, tour bus operator here as well. That, that would be a blessing. And there are some that serve the upper west side, which is our area, that are frequently around seventy second and central park west. So oh there you go. knows who they are. Yeah. I see them going up once well. They actually have Canadian licenses, but they're always in our area. <laughs> Great. Um, film, the, um, limit, the limit of our film locations, whose issue, who raised that issue? I did. Okay. Yeah. Can you um, give us your name? Please. Mike Meisner. Uh, yeah, so, I think the film, they, they disappear in the neighborhoods and take away a lot of parking. Can you come up to the front? They provide, they do a lot of, where do I make them? 
Come to the stand right now. He's got me now. Yeah. Okay. Um, they take up parking spaces. All of a sudden, the signs appear, and, and you can't park here. And so that displaces whole blocks, causes congestion, sidewalk congestion, as well as traffic congestion. Plus, they run big diesel engines for generators. So I don't know. I'm just wondering what you can do to limit the number of film. I mean, how does that work? I don't know the process, but it's well, here at like, I, 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 there's actually a signage on my block that says on October 2nd to right. October 3rd, both sides right. have to be removed um, for the filming of full a new production right. at NBC or something. Right. Um, but I don't think there's as much filming in New York as there used to be. And of course, the city is obviously trying to encourage filming in New York. It's good for New York. Having said that, there, there needs to be some <clears> sort of uh, what was it? Uh, I guess it was um, Law and Order was constantly filming on streets surrounding yeah. my, my, my block and other blocks in my area. Right. So, you know, you want to spread it around if you can. But I think filming generally is good for New York. Well, there it's good for New York. Like who? What New York? Economy. New York economy. Economy. Yeah. economy. Oh. And they that, normally, I don't they think normally so. Give, they normally I, give I think too very few people. Know. I mean, we, I pay taxes. We all pay taxes. I don't see any benefits. For filming it, there is already on the map. I mean, in terms of like popularity, because first of all, you don't even know it's like, are you saying like because it gets like people see a New York street in a movie and they no, go, oh, that's New York? Money. It's, it's are you talking about the spending of the money? Of course, they spend a ton of money, but they pay the cops all the money to move all the cars, etc. Actually, they, do you have but a they specific give you a two area or three week notice? Yeah, yeah that's my neighborhood. That's no, no, but any particular street that's getting overly impacted? Well, I feel like it's overly impacted. It has been three in the past two months, where, where but I haven't been like monitoring like. Uh, 101st, West End, um, and Riverside too, like Riverside in the hundreds, like low hundreds, like 100 and, 100, 100, 100, 100 third. Is that, that was billions that was showing there? Yeah. Then we can pick the shows we all want. <laughs> That'd be great. There's all the good shows. There's a, mayor, right. mayor's there office of, there's a mayor's office of film and television. I think right. That, that, Runs this stuff, and they they actually promote it. They encourage people to come to New York and film because it is good for the economy. You may not believe it. But but he's, he's, I don't I think don't he's asking for that filming. Me. I think he's asking for the filming to be um, it, it, to not have back to back filming or multiple films in the same area within a short period of time. You know, if so if so if the That's office sees sees you know on West Sixty Seventh Street, you've got you know billions on there, and the next week. Somebody else wants to be right there, then to say, you know what, that's actually it's too soon. Can, you, can we schedule it for two what weeks is the later? Discretion involved in granting these licenses. I, don't I, mean, think I just don't know. Right, I, and also I, I, I imagine it's a rubber stamp because the policy is to encourage right. it. Right, it, but that's the thing. Like, how about it? Does anybody? Do they really need all of these vehicles? Do they really need three blocks? Oh, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll assume that. it's that. It's really production, but some of it depends on the production. Sometimes they're just going into a building nearby, and they don't need. It goes on for blocks. Yes, I mean, it's like what? Okay, it's I can kind of kind of kind of just. I can just. Yeah. They were through twelve years of freelancing film production, and yes, they need all the vehicles. And New York City Mayor's Office does grant the permits, and they do monitor where the product. And no, we can't necessarily say. Um, Want to wait for two weeks because of the production schedule. So, but it does um, provide a place to help a lot of people. It doesn't help a neighborhood. Um, they, they, don't, they don't even cater to the neighborhood. They bring their own catering. They don't I, even use any of the local actually, restaurants. Sure. On, when when they were filming, uh, maybe it was a lawn order or something uh, on my block, they actually came and serviced the trees because um, one, one of them had. Um, hung something from a tree and they, they paid for the entire block to get trees um, um, pruned and everything. So yeah, sometimes they do do things. Yeah, that's pretty just rare. Just well, it's a big city, so but maybe this is the only neighborhood that's complaining, so maybe they could just avoid this neighborhood. <laughs> right? I mean, there's plenty of places elsewhere to film. I don't think we should just accept it willy nilly that it's great for the economy. Whatever maybe we should I mean, so, sir, they're usually location based or contained in people, which will be substantial, and yeah. they also very often the contributions made. To the neighborhood, um, it's not done really and Contributions made to the neighborhood. What kind of contribution? Mm -hmm. Black association. It depends. Um, for example, here in the south, um, that might be another function. They do a lot of money to redo a park. It varies from job to job. But um, okay. Well, I don't. I don't see that in these cases. 
I just see they take what I said. They they cause congestion. They take up parking spaces. You might not. And they run their diesel engines all day, all night. You might not be able to see it necessarily, but if you want to contact your phone, you can answer some of the questions for you. Yeah. And you certainly can watch. So this isn't the forum for it. It's the New York City Mayor's office. My expectation is that. The city has made the, a cost, done a cost benefit analysis, and, and right. what Susan's saying is they've decided that the, the benefit is bigger than the cost. Exactly. That the inconvenience that it poses to the people who live here is far outweighed by the benefits. The I feel like they don't hear it enough, maybe. And on the cost side, this is a cost. But I'm talking about a cost, <laughs> and maybe they don't hear it because we just accept it willy nilly, and they have. It's just got a. It's got. A, I mean, it's got a lot of support. People Actually, love movies. I think, sure, that's great. I'm going to let very you. Sympathetic. I'm going to let you speak in a second, but I, I think that perhaps the best avenue for this is for you to contact your city council member, and the city council member sure. will contact the mayor's office of film and get something for the neighborhood from all of the various. Okay, people. that's great. I awesome. think that's, that's a good idea. Maybe that's a good idea. Cool. All right. Interesting. Uh, thanks. My first dress was going to be your cracking voice. That was like a. Big flood of lights and everything. Yes. So, so if yeah. I could say, I live on West 67th Street, across the street from an ABC building. There, there are multiple ABC buildings there, and they do multiple um, live shows there. So every day, I get a lineup in front of me for the View and the Chew, mm -hmm. and for uh, Kelly and whomever she's with these days. Ryan, because whoever it is. So there are hundreds of people lined up on the sidewalk across my building. I get constant complaints from the neighborhood because they think I can do something. Clearly, I'm ineffective. Um, Penny and I and our block association have met with ABC multiple times, and they have said, literally, you are lucky to have us. We saved the Upper West Side, and we will do what we want to do. They said those words to Penny. So it's like... Well, and you know, I there's think it's a fair, a fair question to see if we can get some benefits for the area from. Right. The, so, so good for you, and I get those benefits because the ABC. That's all. I just want to remind them the costs. Um, they they yeah. can do an economic analysis, but the, I don't know if they take into account the inconvenience for all the people right who on the streets that they go on. Yeah, all the residents. Just three quick thoughts. One is, I think going against the economic benefits is going to be a very difficult thing. The city puts a huge amount of effort into making this happen. Um, having said that, having a constituent come here and raise concerns, uh, I think there are questions that we don't know the full answers to. One is, you know, what is the discretion they're using to limit the number of blocks that they're allowing parking or trucks? The second is, uh, I've seen these trucks running uh, power or running diesel engines all day. And what's the process for overseeing that? I know cars aren't allowed to idle for more than three minutes, but we have trucks running on our streets all day. Uh, and we've addressed that unsuccessfully, but we've talked about that. Uh, and the third is this question of, you know, if there are benefits, I'd love to know what they are. And you know, we should make sure that I mean, that's something not, that continues. We're not the committee of filming, but no, but it's it is our streets that they're using. The mayor's office of, of yeah. to come and yeah, and then one issue I've seen is sometimes they'll put up notification after you've parked. So you, it might be a Tuesday, Friday spot, alternate might be suspended a day. They put up notification last minute, and if you don't happen to go to your car, then... They move it. Yeah, they'll move your car when... Got signs on my it, street. They gave us a week's notice, but I don't have Yeah, a car. so I, I think we should make sure that they're always giving notice. Yeah, they, don't get pretty good notice. they do get pretty good notice. It's like a week. Yeah, but not, but not always. I, I, I've had times where I've parked and my car was good until a certain day, and in between that day, when I had no reason to go to my car, they put up notice that cars had to be moved. And I, if you didn't happen to see it, you'd have your car parked where it had to be moved. But again, the city has made a decision. Yeah, I'll talk to the council member. Remind us that the costs are good enough. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, try that. Admittedly, it's an uphill battle. Colleague. Sure, absolutely. Colleague. Going against a lot of money on this topic. Um, if if the, the mayor's office of film and television contacts DOT and says we need this amount of street space, is it just automatically granted, or is because it's the mayor's office of city and film? You know what? They they don't contact us when they need street space. 
things. What they do, they put up signs and they post signs of you know, no parking, making sure it's going to happen. So, 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 so what they do, they work with SACO. It's two organizations that work together. To okay. They don't come directly to us for, from the first week. Yeah. Okay. And, it, and it, this, I mean, to be honest with you, this is a very, very lucrative. Um, we know. We know. Sure. Yeah. Love Definitely talk to your board. Yeah. 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 So let's, let's get some benefits to the board people. Yeah. It's incredible. Worth a shot. Yep. Yeah. 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 So if that school was shooting a movie. <laughs> no, <it's not>. <laughs> <laughs> Schools don't bring economic benefits. That landlord, that landlord would still have stormed down. Uh, <laughs> what is kind of the. This is also me. The second one is also me. Oh, it's me. also you. Oh, okay. That's it. But this is easier one. This is just a city bike station that is on 100, 104th and Riverside. Maybe you know where it is. It's right on, on Big Riverside, right? The double lane Riverside. Uh, and it just, four Riverside. Yeah, it takes up like four parking spaces. Is it on the west side of the? West it's side? on the west side of Riverside, just north of right on the drive. Yeah, yeah. So I love city bike, but this one is easy because there's a whole, you know, there's that, that long, that big broad sidewalk that is really wide. There's like, there's playgrounds and there's grassy spots. They could easily just pop it over there, I think, and it wouldn't have to be. It's also unsafe because that one you're pulling the bike out. Because like you pull your bike out, that is the, you're right there on the road. Like I know some of them are in the streets, but they're in the east-west streets and they're a little calmer. No, this it's is the Riverside where they come down flying down, down, and then it comes into one lane, and then you're supposed yeah. to pull your bike into that. Have you seen the one at Riverside Drive in Ninety? Uh, no. What's that one like? Like also, you're describing. Yeah, also, yeah, okay. Now, the 104th is particularly bad with cars, like he says, going from two lanes to one lane. Yeah. I've, I've tried to get that moved. I've asked to get that moved to 103rd that's, Street because we have the, the block that's daylit. What's that? But the fact that it's on a hill and the, and the bikes and the riders, removing bikes, are not visible to people on the other side of that hill. And Which also, we like, 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 like we said, that it's going from two lanes to one, so there could be a person mm -hmm. in front of you. You're looking at this person coming into your lane. You're not looking to your right where people are pulling bikes out. Yep. We, we actually had a proposed and a, and a located city bike stand that was really in a dark place, and we had it moved to the west side where there's light and the riders are visible. Right. That's good. Yeah. So, you know, with, with so what is the process? For, I mean, obviously, this is... What we, we do is when time. someone asks us, we go out and we look at each location. Oh, okay. Well, I, I think he's raising the question of can we move it into the park? No, I, I, and, yeah, yeah the, park, park the, 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 park. the other place where I'd love to move that site, I, I would so love to move. The question, me, I'm sorry, but where does the park land begin and end? Because the there's a curb, right? And then there's some grassy sidewalk. little spots. The sidewalk is then there's that, gir that sidewalk that's all uneven with the yeah, hexagonal, hexagonal tile. Yes. Yeah, that, from, and then there's the wall that is maybe proper no, Riverside no, Park no, proper. It goes all the way up. Ken would know. All the way to the he's on the shore. Maybe he's on the parks. But yeah, that's Riverside that's Park. Yeah. Well, I, I believe that they will not locate a city bike stand in a park because the park is not available 24 hours Wait, a day. Technically. In front of my oh, is that building, why? there is a, the, the city bikes are on the hexagonal. That's so yes, the in the park. park. In the park. Because the in the park is not available. Are you talking about the sidewalk or the park? He's talking about in the park. No, no, I'm talking about you can this one. I think you can put this one on the sidewalk. Okay. I mean, right, like right. five feet from where it is now, like on the sidewalk. Yeah, look. And you know, some of the sidewalks, is, what's that one in, in the 80s on the west side? I forget where it's exactly, but they put it on a narrow sidewalk, like a regular street city sidewalk, and they turn it like this. And the bikes are like this lined up, and they don't need all that space. And so, like, why they continue to put them in the street and take up precious on street parking? They do that over and over again. Well, okay. let's, let's, just, let's just be clear here. We, we, we haven't lost, lost parking, we've lost car parking. Yeah. We have parking for four times as many vehicles right now as we did before. And uh, some people would call that precious. Wait a minute, we have parking. We have we have more parking spaces yeah. for the yeah, yeah, we're not we have side. parking spaces for thirty or forty bicycles. Thirty or forty people get to access to a bicycle and, and, and ride it versus you know how many cars three cars. Right. And the and the bikes, Which, you know, used for a short period of time, so multiple people will use each bike 
I'm not, I'm not talking about the merits of city bikes versus cars. No, he's not, he he's said he was a fan of city bikes. I'm a city bike fan. He's like an early adopter. I was just saying. I think that like, we're thinking so little thought into places. We'll take a look at it. Yeah. I mean, we, we, can, we can quickly look online. There, there's no, it's not a matter of just putting it on the sidewalk there because there's the big fenced in grass area. So. So do we come back later? Or have, right? Is there nothing like you put it back on the no, thing? Does it become one of these number no, items that you vote no. for? How does that work? Don't no, come back later. We'll call it no, we have to look at it. No, I mean, <laughs> so like, how does it work? The process for this? No, so I presented it to you guys. New business. Maybe not uh, the next meeting. Oh, and a month from now. A month from now. Right. Exactly. And then two weeks. you'll let me know. Oh, oh it's two, two weeks. This meeting was the October right time. So, oh, yes. okay. Yes, so, October 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 October. October. and that's the one that you'll, consider. like, it'll be a numbered item. And you can and call. if you vote on it, then it goes to the main you committee. You can call the office and they'll show you go to the website. Right. Okay. In the interim, we will inspect. I thank you. I I can tell you right now, you can't just put it on the sidewalk there. There's a big fenced in grass area. Right. Okay. So, but maybe, like, what about, like, so yeah, we'll look at now. We'll look at an alternate. If this is an unsafe place, well, one quick question: Does anybody you guys know do you, do, what is the process of placing city bikes? Like, she, I don't know where she, she went, just left, but, but uh, in the restroom. Uh, we put in a request. It's up to motivate the, the company that is city bike um, and the OT if it's possible to move. So the, no, no. I mean, when when they, when they bring them in the first time. Oh, there was, a, there was a whole process. Long 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 long. Long. Obviously, you weren't part of it. I was not. I years. didn't know that. It went on years. Years. Hours. 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 It was a lot. It's through you, you, you guys? Through the committee board? No. It's so, the city bike no, no, would come in contact with the local community board to say, or everybody leaves. Folks, we have to do something because the applicant for the new stand is not here. Do we know where we are in Euler on this right now? Do we have to pass it as a protective disapproval? Ending him coming back. Do we know what we have? I don't know. Where where Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't want to lose an opportunity to comment. Um, do we like what we could do is we could ask Penny and we could caucus before full board if we need a resolution. We could do that. Do we like it? I, I don't know. Okay. Um, we should look at that corner as well. Make sure there's no ATM okay, so or anything like that. There. Look at the yeah, I have a problem with proving it. Approving it? I have a problem with approving it. I would hope you have a problem with approving it. We don't have done it before. We don't approve it without, right. without being able to ask the applicant a question. Michelle. Michelle. Um, I'm not telling your committee what to do, but our tried and true rule is now do the resolution. Disapprove, you know, without prejudice. Yeah, I, don't, I just don't know where we are in the no, Euler no. procedure. If we have another 30 days, then we could. Put it off and tell the applicant that you didn't show, and if you don't show, then you get a well, disapproval. I would think if it's on your agenda, you have to make the If we if we if we vote as Michelle suggests, and we find out that we have an extra thirty days, can we withdraw? We can withdraw. And then it sounds we like could also um, do it talk to Penny board. tomorrow and do it before the full board. board. That's what I would. We could do that too. Yeah. Okay. Always well, that. Just so we can't just leave without doing no. something. Yeah. Okay. So okay. what would the what's the committee's you want to meet before? I'd rather just get it over with and protective disapproval if we can change it. We could withdraw it. Right. Okay. Why don't we just do that? I have a motion for a protective disapproval. Okay, um, so move. Uh, all those in favor? Uh, protective disapproval. Of this is of the new stand that's proposed one, two, three, for the North Four, five, five, six. One, two, one, four. Is your hand up? No, no, no. Um, okay. Can you tell me um, what that means? <laughs> Andrew is the senior it advisor. Means, it means if the like, applicant doesn't come and it's within the time frame, then it will be approved. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sorry. And it's possible that tomorrow, when we when we give these things, we tell Penny what happened. She contacts the applicant and tells, says, "Where were you? You know, you, this is your only opportunity. Unless we have another thirty days, and then he has to come and appear before us before the full board next Tuesday, or he will be disapproved." Okay, so we're leaving that option open to the applicant. We are. In that case, you can add me to the uh, okay, so so what's that phone seven number? zero zero non committee members. All those in favor? Uh, two. All those opposed. All those abstaining. Two zero one. Great. So we may or may not have a. We'll know more tomorrow.
we have a pre-meeting, so we're going to be like, all right, thanks. Nice. 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 Do we, when we have pre-meetings, is it just that I missed the, the I never know about them. We, we, no, we always put a notice out on the but it, always it, it, it's it's on the agenda. website. Yeah, it's on the agenda. Penny sends an email, you don't notice the pre-meeting of transportation or housing or whatever it is. Somehow I'm missing them. Yeah, I, I'm missing them too. Yeah. I'd love to see just a dedicated email. Well, yeah. yeah, I'd love to see a dedicated email to the committee just saying we have a meeting.